I thought our dolls might enjoy some chocolate chip cookies to snack on this week. So join me and see how fun and easy these are to make. Okay, the first step in our chocolate chip cookies is to make some chocolate chips that will go into our cookies. So to do that, you need a brown chocolate colored polymer clay. I'm using Sculpey 3 in suede brown. You could also use Fimo in chocolate color. It's the same clay I had out for the um, chocolate bars in the S'mores series. And basically all you're going to do is you're going to roll out some little skinny snakes. They don't have to be even. They just need to be long. You need long pieces that are rounded. And one of these will do several cookies. And what we need to do, we need to bake this clay off. I'm going to do two of them. And after it's baked and cooled, then we can cut it up and make chocolate chips to put into our cookies. If we didn't pre-bake this, and it doesn't matter that I've got stuff on my tray that I'm picking up with my, with my clay, it's going to get, um, it will be buried into the chocolate chip cookies. Uh, if I didn't do this first, our chocolate chips would not hold their shape when we tried to put them into our cookies. So I'm going to go bake these, and when they're baked and cooled, I'll be back and we can make some cookies for the dolls. Now that our chocolate chip uh, snakes are cooked and cooled off, I'm gonna cut mine up. I'm not gonna cut up a whole bunch right now, I'm just gonna cut them up kind of as I need them. You can use a craft knife, you can use your clay knife, um, you can use a single edge razor blade, pretty much anything you've got that you're comfortable cutting with. And it's okay if they're different sizes, that's fine. So we're going to put just a few of these off to the side. It's easier to keep track of these than these in my craft room, so I only cut up what I need at the time. Now, we need to make our cookies. We need a light dough colored clay, and I didn't have any either Fimo Sahara or Primo um, Ecru, but I had Sculpey Tan. And I have Sculpey, I've already forgotten what color this is, I've got two packages, Sculpey Beige. This is too light, this is too dark, but when you mix them together in equal portions, you get a pretty convincing cookie color. So what I did, I ran this through my pasta machine on the thickest setting. This, the thickness doesn't matter. What we're doing is we're going to portion our clay. I'm going to back the camera up just a little bit. I had it down there for another project. All right, I have a clay cutter. This happens to be three quarters of an inch in diameter. You could use any size cutter you want. You could even cut your clay up into squares. The only, what we're doing is we're portioning our clay to make equal size pieces so that all our cookies come out pretty much the same size. So I'm gonna cut a bunch of circles. And like I said, it doesn't matter. It could be a star, it could be a heart, it could be a square, it could be whatever you've got that gives the right size. Because now, what I will do is I'll roll this up in a ball. I'll roll all four of them up in a ball. I've got chalk all over my hand already and I haven't even started. It doesn't even have to be a very neat ball. Now, I am going to work on a piece of coarse sandpaper. This is 60 grit sandpaper. Um, there was a sale on these ones that are pre-cut for sanders, for electric sanders a while back. So I bought a package of them. I'm going to set this right here. I'll pour, just kind of set these out on here. I'm working on this because this will texture the bottom as I'm working on the top. It saves me time. We need to flatten this out, and we're going to texture these with a couple of different things, actually three. I have this 
This is one of those scrubbing pads that you can get for washing dishes. I got this at the Dollar Tree. I like the Dollar Tree ones better than the ones from the grocery store because they're softer and they have a smaller texture. I also have a wadded up ball of aluminum foil. I use this a lot for texturing and I have a toothbrush that's dedicated to crafting. So we are going to by using all three of those things we are going to get a really interesting texture. And you're saying, but there's no chocolate chips. That's because we don't want to waste chocolate chips on the insides of these. We'll get to the chocolate chips in a minute. You see, I'm just pressing. And by using those tools, we get an interesting texture. Now, let's see if I have... I'm looking for something I forgot to grab earlier, and I'm hoping I've got it. No. I need to pause the camera and go get something. All right. This is a piece of uncooked spaghetti from the kitchen. What I'm going to do, get the end wet. Just I just lick the end. It won't hurt you. And it picks up small pieces. The um, because of the way pasta is made, when the flour in it gets wet, when it's uncooked, it gets really sticky. And it allows me to precisely place these little pieces of clay into my cookies. If you've got some that are too thick to be realistic, just push them down in. See? When you find you're not picking up your clay anymore, lick the end of your pasta again. It won't hurt you. Or if you're queasy about that, have a little container of water on hand. Just a little drop will do. Try not to put the same number of chips in each cookie because we want these to look kind of random. Your pasta is probably not strong enough to push the clay in the little pieces into the clay very if they're very big. You can do some though. Anywhere between three and about five or seven chips in each cookie is probably what you're looking for. Any more than that, it will look a little much. Any less than that, they look pretty sparse. Remember to put some down on the side. Oh, come on. There. Now, we're going to make these look baked. I'm actually going to start with the bottom texture first. See, by putting that there, we've got texture. We're going to kind of roll these on our sandpaper because we didn't get texture down on the sides. So I'm going to start, I'm going to do that first. You don't want to get too much, but you want some down there. Little cracks in the clay, that's cool. That makes it look more real too. All right. We have a yellow ochre chalk, we have a brown, and we have kind of a reddish brown. Same ones I always use, or variation of those that I always use when I'm doing baked goods. Start with the bottoms. Uh, I need something to scrape that. I don't like to use my clay knife to scrape my chalk. You won't need very much. We're not doing very many cookies here. You get too much dark brown on, and it looks like you burnt the cookies. I'm 
Looks like I dropped that down onto something, so I'm going to put another piece of chocolate. All right. Oops. I knocked my chocolate chip out of my cookie. That's okay. Push it back in. Now the reason that we don't start out with a darker colored clay, why we use a lighter colored clay and we put the chalk over it, it gives us a depth of color. If you used a darker color clay and didn't use the chalk to add the, the browning, it would look like plastic. It would look like just a piece of clay. By using the darker color and putting chalk over it, it adds some depth. It makes it look more realistic. I am going to go bake these according to the pack directions on the package of clay and when they're back baked and cooled I'll be back and we'll look at how they turned out. Well here are our finished baked and cooled chocolate chip cookies for the dolls. I think your dolls will enjoy them and I think you'll enjoy making them once you get started. As you saw in the video these are super easy to make. In fact I would bet you will find that once you start making these Making polymer clay chocolate chip cookies for your dolls is almost as addictive as eating the real ones in real life. Let me know if you find that to be true also. Be sure and check the blog post. Um, I always have more information on there, or I try to. And be sure and find the fan page on Facebook. I share a little bit more there, and sometimes I even give you some pictures of what we're going to do before the day the tutorial comes out. So join us over there and join the conversation. I'd love to see what you're making for your dolls, and you can share with pictures with me over there really easy. So I hope you enjoyed this. Be sure and subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.